Canaan, also known as Phoenicia, is recognized as one of the earliest civilizations to develop in the Near East. This region includes modern-day Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, Syria, and Jordan. Initially, the people of this civilization were predominantly black, with a diversity of populations joining them over time. We further assert that the so-called Near East is part of Africa, a term Western European scholars coined to strip Africa of its historical achievements. We will establish that the first people of the so-called Near East were melanated people from Africa. Until the lions have their own historians, the tales of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. The Canaanites, or Phoenicians, were not just a local culture of the Near East. They profoundly impacted world history. They were pioneers in many areas, including introducing writing systems to ancient Greece, establishing the mighty city of Carthage in North Africa, and dominating the Western Mediterranean Sea. In this video, we will reveal osteological, DNA, and written facts regarding this civilization's contributions beyond what is often found in biblical stories. Let's begin with written accounts. An ancient ivory carving shows an Egyptian figure holding a lotus flower. This piece of art, created by the Phoenicians, was found in Nimrud, Iraq, dating back to the 9th or 8th century BC. You can make out the frizzy Nubian hair. This is, without question, a black man. Eshmunazor II was a Phoenician king who ruled the city of Sidon around 2,500 years ago. His heritage was deeply rooted in African, Egyptian culture, and he was known to be black. You can see his African facial features, hairstyle, and beard. His sarcophagus is preserved and can be explored at the Louvre Museum in Paris. Historians widely accept the Near East's earliest known inhabitants as the Natufians. The Natufians are considered the ancestors of the Canaanites and Phoenicians. Ancient texts, including those found in Ras Shamra, suggest that the Phoenicians traced their origins back to Egypt. This connection to Africa is also mentioned in the Bible, specifically in Genesis 10.6, which lists the descendants of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Punt, and Canaan as originating from this region. The name Ham is thought to come from the ancient Egyptian word Kam, meaning charcoal or black, which is a nod to the African ancestry of these people, an original name for black people, and is echoed in various contemporary African languages with words meaning black or charcoal. Examples of Cam's linguistic similarity to other Africans are shown here. Thus, Ham is considered the biblical forefather of black people, with his descendants spreading across regions from Sudan and Egypt to the African Great Lakes and the so-called Near East, which is historically part of Africa. The name Canaan is believed to derive from Kin Anu, indicating a connection to the Anu people. The Anu, described as black people from the Great Lakes in southern Africa, are credited with founding early Egyptian civilization. Therefore, the Canaanites were essentially Egyptians who migrated to the Near East. The term Phoenician, which comes from Greek, has been interpreted by some historians like Gavin de Beer to mean dark-skinned. It is worth noting that in African historiography, this civilization is often referred to as Jahi, a name used by the ancient Egyptians. Next, we will explore key osteological studies. The diversity in human skull shapes and facial features across different populations is a fascinating aspect of human anthropology. Among these variations, two notable skull shapes are dolichocephaly and brachycephaly. Dolichocephaly is characterized by a longer skull length from the front to the back. This skull shape is commonly found in many African populations. Along with dolichocephaly, these populations often exhibit prognathism, a forward protrusion of the jaw, and generally have a shorter facial structure. In contrast, individuals of European descent, often referred to in this context as white individuals, are more likely to have a skull shape known as brachycephaly. This refers to a shorter skull length from front to back. Additionally, a feature known as orthognathism, where the jaw aligns more straightly with the forehead and has a longer facial structure, is more common in these populations. A study published in 2016 in the journal Nature by Losif Lazaridis and his team suggested that the Natufians, ancient inhabitants of the Near East, might have origins in North Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa based on the shape of their skulls. This idea isn't new. 
it has been discussed for decades. Cech Anta Jop, a notable historian, was quite straightforward in his book, Nations Negres et Culture, stating that the ancient people found in Canaan, known as the Natufians, had features typical of black Africans. This observation was not only limited to Canaan, similar features were noted in skeletons from Tyre, a key Phoenician city. Mark Adolphe Sauter's research, the brachycephalic races of the Near East, from the origins to the present day, analyzed skulls from the region once known as Canaan. His analysis of skeletal remains from 5,000 years ago showed that out of 39 skulls examined, 37 had a long, narrow shape, dolichocephalic, typically associated with black Africans, and none matched the short, broad shape, brachycephalic, associated with white populations. A similar pattern was observed 2,500 years ago, with a majority of the skulls being dolichocephalic. 92 were dolichocephalic, and 17 were brachycephalic. Let's look at DNA evidence. Research into the DNA of remains found in the so-called Near East has revealed fascinating insights into the origins of the Canaanites Phoenicians, indicating they were originally black Africans. It's interesting to note that Africans carry none of Neanderthal DNA. To place this in proper perspective, Neanderthals were an ancient group that lived in Europe up until about 28,000 years ago. Further genetic studies have clarified that the early populations from the Near East, including places like Iran, Turkey, and Armenia, share less in common with Neanderthals than later Eurasian groups. This points to the conclusion that the first people in the Near East, much like those in Africa, did not descend from Neanderthals and were, in fact, black Africans. A study in 2017 by Mark Haber and his team, published in the American Journal of Human Genetics, explored the genetic makeup of the Phoenicians. Their findings indicated that Eurasian individuals with lighter skin only began arriving in the region between 2100 and 3700 years ago, well after Egypt's influence in Canaan. The DNA analysis of skeletons from Sidon, around 3700 years old, showed that their skin pigmentation was closest to that of Africans. This led the researchers to suggest that the original inhabitants of Sidon, and by extension the Phoenicians, likely had darker skin compared to the modern-day Lebanese population. For those quick to point out the famous DNA study of the young man of Bursa, we have already discussed this in a previous video. See the description. Let's bring this home by establishing the link between Egypt, which is actually the black land, Kemet, and the so-called Near Eastern cultures of Canaan or Phoenicia. When Egypt was first united under the leadership of Narmer, a pharaoh with roots in both Sudan and Egypt, around 3300 BCE, it marked the beginning of a civilization that would become a world-leading power. Even from those early days, Egypt had established its presence in the region of Canaan through emissaries and agents, exercising influence and control. Throughout Egyptian history, Canaan often faced challenges from invasions by nomadic groups, but it would regain its strength with Egypt's support, demonstrating the close ties between the two regions. This partnership between the two nations was not only significant politically, but also culturally. Together, they played a crucial role in bringing civilization to Europe, introducing the Greeks to writing and science. Phoenicia, in particular, served as a strategic base for one of the greatest African rulers, Jehuti Mesu, known as Thutmos III, to extend his influence into areas like Iraq and Turkey. Through these efforts, these two African peoples made an indelible mark on the development of Western civilization. Let's explore various Phoenician figures that highlight the close cultural connections between the Phoenicians and their Egyptian counterparts. This figure represents Isis, known in Egyptian mythology as the goddess of motherhood, magic, and fertility. Next, we have Hathor, which symbolizes motherhood, love, and joy. And finally, the figure depicted is Ma'at, embodying truth, justice, and cosmic order. These representations showcase the shared mythological and religious symbols between these ancient civilizations. The Phoenicians, known for their seafaring and trading prowess, faced a gradual decline due to the fragmented nature of their civilization. Unlike empires unified under a single ruler, Phoenicia was a collection of city-states, each with its own leadership. This lack of unity made them vulnerable to external influences and invasions. The region saw an influx of various groups from the deserts of the Middle East and the Mediterranean, which began to change the demographic and cultural landscape of Phoenicia. 
This period of history is symbolically marked by the biblical story of Abraham's arrival. Among these newcomers were the Philistines, who, after being defeated by Egypt, settled in the area and eventually gave their name to Palestine. As these new populations settled among the Phoenicians, they brought with them their languages and cultures, leading to significant changes in the local society. Over time, the Phoenician language evolved into what is known today as Semitic languages, and the original Egyptian Phoenician religious beliefs were transformed and adapted into what would become Judaism, marking a shift from its African roots. The mixing of populations became more pronounced as Egypt's power waned. Without the protection of this once dominant neighbor, the Canaanites, the broader term for the people of the region, including Phoenicians, were left to fend for themselves. The final blows came with Alexander the Great's conquests in 332 BC, followed by the Roman Empire, leading to the complete disappearance of Phoenician identity as a distinct culture. Today, the descendants of the Phoenicians, including people from Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, and Jordan, reflect a predominantly white heritage that has evolved from an initial black population over millennia. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I would like to say a special thank you to all of our channel members, Nubian storytellers. Join our Discord and share your knowledge with like-minded people. Be proud of your African heritage. We have a great past and an even greater future.